Early Hammer Manipulation Probably one of the craziest things to ever happen to Super Mario Bros. 3. It only affects the Warpless category, but it affects the Warpless category in such a big way that I really want to make a video in it and explain to all you guys just exactly how it works. I thought about manipulating the RNG in Mario 3 before, and so has a lot of other people, and the thing is, is that we all thought that in order to manipulate the Hammer Brothers movements, you would have to power on the console, and you would have to play frame by frame from the beginning all the way till 2 Fortress, until the, the Hammer comes over, frame perfect every single time. You see, the Hammer Brothers aren't RNG, I'm RNG. I can't play the same every single time I power on the system, so the Hammer Brothers will never consistently give me the movements I want. When I was thinking about that, I realized that what if I created a tool assisted speedrun that was slower than me so I could keep up with it, but manipulated after I powered on with it, manipulated when I grabbed the card in 2 1, 2 2, and 2 Fortress to give me the movements I want? It turned out that. Other than powering on the system on the same frame, it didn't matter what I did in World 1. I didn't have to play the 20,000 frames perfectly every single time. I just had to create a task that got early hammer that was slower than me so I could stay ahead of it after powering on. And then once I get to 2 1, 2 2, and 2 4, I'd be able to hit the card, hopefully on the same frame, and then that would allow me to do the movement. I pretty much made a task that did that, and then I tried to replicate those things, and it kind of worked, but before I got too into it, I thought to myself, is it possible to create a task where I hit the card at the end of the level on two different frames, but two consecutive frames, and get the same movement? So if I hit the card on frame 19,001, and I got the movement I wanted with the Hammer Brother, and then I hit the card on frame 19,002, would I get the same movement? If so, this would make this so much easier. Lag frames are super, super important to this. There's two levels in World 1 that lag, is 1-1 one, one and 1-5. One, so I had to come up with strategies that got rid of the lag in those levels, and the good thing is is that early hammer saves so much time that if I get rid of the lag and I, I waste, what, six seconds getting rid of the lag in World 1, I can handle a six second time loss to save 30 seconds in World 2. That's totally worth it. After we finished everything, got rid of all the lag, I told Orange what to do, where to put these things, he figured out all the, the good and bad frames to hit the cards. Orange, he's in the Mario 3 Discord, he's in my chat all the time, he's, he's super involved with this, he's one of the biggest helpers. Once we finally the entire ROM, we actually gave it to Duango, which is the guy who runs Taskbot, and how awesome he is, and we asked him if he could console verify this. We console verified it, it did happen on console, so right then and there, I knew right away I can do this. Step number one, I have to turn my console and the emulator on my PC on on the exact same frame, because if we're desynced on any frames, then the frame that I think I'm jumping to hit the card and copying the task won't actually be the same frame because the console and the task started on different frames. What I do is, in my video, I watch for the Luigi's jumping on Mario's head and, and seeing if there's any kind of wave-like um, movement, because that would really show, right? If I could see Luigi moving two pixels higher than the other Luigi in the task video, you would see kind of like a wave. So I try and look for no wave, they move the exact same. I use like my peripheral to kind of check out. I then wait for the task to start the run a little bit before I do, because the task was set up in a way where it gets all movements of two, which eliminates any RNG that we have to worry about. I start my game three seconds later so I can salvage as much time as I possibly can. I then do 1-1, one, one, and as you can see, I change up how my 1-1 one, one is. I jump on the little block and then I jump on the two turtles and go up in the cloud, which is much different than what you normally see me do. I do that to eliminate the lag. And then I beat the level, pretty normal. 1-2, pretty normal. 1-4, pretty normal. No lag in 1-4. 1-5 has some lag, but if you watch closely, you can see that I run down, I bash the one beetle into the other beetle, and that kills them, and now that they're dead, they don't really cause so much on the screen, and it doesn't lag. It is a sacrifice of time, but it definitely does work. So I got rid of the lag there. I'm catching up. As, I, as I'm going, I'm catching up to the task. I'm, I'm slightly getting ahead of the task. 1-6, no lag. Just do it normally. Fortress, whatever. That's fine. Do it normally. What I do is I wait at 2-1 because I caught up to the task, and then I enter 2-1 at the same time as the task. And that allows me to manipulate and abuse the in-game timer because the task does it to give me extra good frame. Okay? So, this is where it gets interesting. So, 
I start the level at the same time, I get to the card, okay? Now you see the uh, the little blocks that you saw at the top of the task, the little squares, they're gonna fill up with green, green blocks, and it's gonna be in a timed management. It's gonna have a certain rhythm to it, which, you know, is always so hard to keep up because I still gotta play the level. Sometimes it can be really hard, but, there's gonna be a rhythm to them, and I'm gonna to wanna to press A on the exact frame where the last square hits green. So as soon as it's green, you hit A to hit that frame. Now, remember when I mentioned about how we went through all the steps to see how many good and bad frames which just give us good movements? In 2-1, it's not a single frame trick, which makes this so awesome. It's not a single frame trick to hit the card. I don't have to wait to enter 2-2 with the task because the level timer is not manipulated to give me that extra frame, but I still have to wait for the green blocks because I have to still time it with the exact same frame to get the movement that I want to fort. If I get early P speed and two fort, the fortress will lag. And as we know, lag frames are really bad. We don't get P speed in the early parts of it, but then we get P speed near the end and then there's no lag frames whatsoever. We originally thought that grabbing the orb in two fort was gonna be a big trouble, but it's actually not trouble at all because we just hold right in the wall. And then as it's counting down, once you hit the last green square, just do a full big jump and then land on the top part of the orb, right? The biggest part of the orb. And much like the card, if I just nail it properly, there's not going to be any inconsistencies in grabbing the orb or anything. And then we'll find out here if I get it. First try! What? Oh my god, what first try? Are you kidding me? Oh, what? First try? I love my manipulations. Oh my gosh, dude.